one of the leading scholars in the field of eschatology, prophecy, has this explanation of the last days. The Bible uses the phrases, the last days and the last times, with reference to several different time periods. Since the coming of God's promised Messiah is identified with the last days, there is a sense in which they began with the incarnation of Jesus Christ, in these last days, He, has spoken, finally, once for all, to us by His Son, Hebrews 1 verse 2, and He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last times for your sake, see 1 Peter 1 verse 20. Broadly speaking, therefore, the last days include the earthly life and ministry of Jesus Christ, the entire history of the Church to the present, as well as all events prophesied in the Scriptures that are still unfulfilled. Even near the beginning of the Church's history, John pointed out that the many Antichrists who have come are evidence that this is the last hour, see 1 John 2 verse 18. Although these predicted events may point to the last days in a broader sense than just the life of the Church, Paul warned Timothy that, quote, there will be terrible times in the last days, unquote, 2 Timothy 3 verse 1. Then he described the character of people, ending with the clause, having a form of godliness but denying its power, 2 Timothy 3 verse 5. Both Peter and Jude warn that in the last days scoffers will come, 2 Peter 3 verse 3, and Jude 1 verse 18. Although such opposers of the Christian faith appeared in the early generations of church history, they apparently will increase and become more active as the church approaches its last days. A final comment. Keeping in mind that the last days began with Christ's first coming, see, Isaiah 2 verses 1 to 4, we have a prophecy which will be fulfilled at Christ's second coming. Christ will return at the end of the last half of Daniel's 70th week, specifically at the end of the three and a half year period which Jesus referred to in Matthew 24 verse 21, as the quote, Great Tribulation, unquote. Brother James Ray has a wonderful teaching on this subject this morning. Let's watch and listen to his teaching now. If you can, if you can see this far away, there's only uh, four passages that we're going to be primarily dealing on. Uh, but we will jump around a little bit. But this, this is not a flyover. Uh, it's, uh, I've, I've abandoned those. Uh, I run out of time. Okay, let's join in prayer. Ask God's blessing on the reading and study of His Word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that we get to come together and look at what Your Word has to say to us. And as always, Lord, just get me out of the way. This isn't about me. It's about Your believers hearing Your words, not mine, but Your words. And I just ask that they be uh, heard, received, understood and uh, applied to our lives that we can go away from here understanding your nature a little bit better and your grace and mercy that gives us the salvation and the blessed hope of your return. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Where Brother Mike left off, I'll start in chapter 2 of his uh, talking about uh, the, the last days uh, and what we're going to do basically is look what God's Word has to say about the last days which are leading up to the return of Christ, our blessed hope, and uh, the day of the Lord uh, where He brings to an end the time that He created, also known as the history of the world. So uh, that, that, that's where we're going to start. So... Uh, 2 Thessalonians, 2nd uh, uh, first verse. Now, we, crest, we request you, uh, this is in about uh, 50 A.D., uh, so we're into the church, uh, church age there. Brethren and sistren, regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to Him, that you may not be quickly shaken, I'm reading from the New American Standard, from your composure, in other words, uh, uh, discouraged, if you will, or disturbed by either a spirit, 
there were those around, or a message or a letter, as it were, from us, which it's not, because this is the letter right here that Paul's writing, to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Verse 3, don't let anybody deceive you, for it, the day of the Lord, will not, will not come unless what? The apostasy occurs first. That's the falling away. And the man of lawlessness, that's the Antichrist, is revealed, the son of destruction, uh, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being capital G, God. All the other ones don't count. We've done away from, with him. That's in the future. Do you remember? Well, I was telling you this. Uh, I was telling you this. Uh, and you know what restrains him now. This is a, an obvious answer. Uh, and he can say, okay, guys, you know what restrains him now so that in his time he may be revealed. Only God can stop and re restrain satanic activity. It was shown in, in Job and, and, uh, and other places. For the mystery of lawlessness, we'll talk about that later, is already at work. And only he who restrains him will do so until he's taken out of the way. And the book of Revelation does say when he and how he's going to be taken out of the way into the, to the pit. Okay, and this is the one, and he just describes him a little more, coming with the cord and the activity of capital S, Satan, with all power, signs, and <laughs> false wonders. And with all the deception of wickedness, a lot of that going around right now, for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth. Just what Al was preaching about that uh, a few minutes ago. <coughs> so as to, verse 10, be saved. And uh, now, verse 11, this is about the last days. And for this reason, God, now let's stop right there. God is omniscient. He's outside of time. He knows how many kids you were going to have, how many jobs you were going to have, what churches you were involved in, all your sins, all your uh, good things, who you married, everything, because he's, he's omniscient. He knows, and he knows who will believe the truth and who will not believe the truth. It's not, God's not wondering, well, I don't, I don't know if old Chuck is ever going to come to the Lord or not. He's getting on up there. No, he, he knew exactly what year Chuck would be Amen. saved by his Amen. redeeming, redeeming grace. Okay, so for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that might, they might believe what is false in order that they all, this verse 12, may be judged, judged the only cr true judge who did not believe the truth but took pleasure in wickedness. Just like Pharaoh, just like uh, anyone else in the Bible that was a gross sinner, God knew the decision he would make. He would reject him. So he says, let the deluding influence go. Uh, let, let the evil reign. Uh, they're not going to believe me. Uh, I know that. So, Let's uh, display in himself as God. And, and, and verse 5 again, I just want to reiterate. God, uh, Paul told them, I told you. Now there are, and again, I'm not making predictions. I'm not, I don't have a big uh, eschatological uh, draft uh, of days and dates. Uh, that, that's not the purpose of, of me. Uh, it's kind of like my mom's best friend. Uh, she told me as an adult, I was talking about her, and says, well, you know why she joined the Baptist church over here with us. Uh, and I said, no, why? She wanted a premillennial rapture. And uh, I said, oh, okay, that's fine. And it is probably going to turn out that way as the scriptures uh, ind indicate. But uh, there, there's, uh, and you've probably heard more than I have uh, uh, the, the TV preachers, uh, there was one that said, okay, uh, and we'll take the Olivet uh, discourse here in Matthew. He says, uh, observe the fig tree. Uh, when it is in bloom, uh, then, and, and the fruit uh, comes forth, uh, you know, uh, and it loses its leaves. 
Verily I say to you, and I'm paraphrasing here, this generation will not pass away until these things happen. Yes. Well, they say, okay, uh, the, 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 the fig tree emblem of the nation of Israel was established in 1948, and a generation is 40 years, so that means 1988. 1988 is when the Lord is coming. <coughs> Stuff like that that doesn't make a, 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 a bit of sense, you know. In fact, the, the Greek generation is really, this race will not uh, fade. Meaning, the Israelites, the, the, the Jews, are God's chosen people, and he's not going to abandon them. Uh, he's going to save them uh, and re restore them uh, where they will inherit all of that uh, kingdom. <coughs> Uh, there's other ones. I remember the, the, y, the, the Y2K thing in, in 2000. There were literally preachers down in Houston saying that's, that's when it's going to collapse. The economy is all controlled by computers and it's going to collapse and it's going to set up the Antichrist and Jesus is going to come. The tribulation will start. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not here to make any claims like that. So let's go. The last days. Uh, Let's go to, uh, I can't move the board, it's being balanced by a bunch of books. Uh, uh, it, the one, it, it threw a wheel, it threw a wheel and it'll cave in. And, but uh, Uncle Joe uh, took care of it, he's, he's got it braced. So, Second Peter, we're going to talk about not only what Paul says, but what Simon Peter said. Second Peter 3.10. Got, got, got to get a new Bible. This one's uh, get, 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 getting. Get, get, get. Yeah. I don't think. I think this one's past the rebounding. It's old, old, old as me. Words haven't changed, so it's good. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's still good. Yeah. Okay, and here's another description of the last day. By the way, the last days. Uh, in my opinion, I think the last days started when Jesus came bodily uh, as the Redeemer. He had a, a, a task, an accomplishment that uh, yes. before the world was created, he knew that he was going to come and redeem his creation created in his image. And uh, that time in history that he created, he came. And did, uh, ministered for three years and then paid the price, a ransom for many, that we might be saved, whosoever believes. And then the clock started counting. It is finished, he said on the cross, that redemptive work. Now, the last Time's days, the, 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 what? Time's a waste. Yes, yes. Time's losing a waste. light, as Grandpa would tell me. So uh, I think those last days began then. You could say the ascension. When uh, he uh, uh, said, uh, I will not leave you as orphans, I will return. And that promises our blessed hope. Okay, so the, in the last days, Simon Peter is saying that. Scoffers and mockers, uh, well, I, I better read from the word, not my notes yet. <laughs> Time out, time out. Second Peter 3, 10. Uh, okay, 10. Okay, God's not slow about his promise, uh, as, as some uh, count slow to say. Not wishing for any to perish, but have all to come to repentance. That doesn't mean all are going to be, be saved and be part of that whosoever that believes. It all says, will. it says, uh, as some count slow to say, but is patient. Not wishing, yes, God wishes that everyone would have the uh, capacity, the humbleness, the uh, repentant heart, and the seeking heart, but he knows that is not true uh, the, the, because uh, the, those, the, there are those who reject him. So, but the day of the Lord, let's go. Verse 10, will come like a thief in the night. Uh, 
sneak up on you, which the heavens will pass away with a roar and the elements will be destroyed with intense heat and the work uh, and the earth and its works will be burned up. And again, I'm not a nuclear scientist like uh, Jimmy Carter, but uh, I, I understand a little bit about physics and, and the physics guys can help me out. I believe that God will speak and one of his natural laws, like gravity or anything else, the law of atomic fusion will cease. And when that happens, everything is held together by atomic structure. Boom. There it goes. Uh, talk about intense heat. The, the, the bombs that the military makes are firecrackers compared to when God speaks and that law stops. That, that's just, uh, again, my opinion because the uh, elements... That, that, that's the bare essentials. It can only be liquid gas or, or uh, solid. Anyway, but it, it's going to get destroyed, uh, as we, uh, he says. Verse 11, since all of these things are to be destroyed in this way, uh, a question, a uh, sort of a question, uh, uh, Peter asks, so what sort of people ought you be in holy conduct and godliness? or holiness, uh, looking and hastening the coming of the day of God, on a gun, which the heavens will be destroyed and the elements will melt uh, with intense heat. I think that question, uh, it's, uh, it, it's on the walls of our worship center. We are a body of believers where our mission is to make disciples of Jesus. Yes. And our vision is to live, love, and serve those around us. Be that salt and light. Uh, it's, it's that simple. Jesus didn't say uh, on the mount when he uh, ascended. Uh, guys, uh, before I leave, uh, I'd like you to think about something. Uh, every now and then... Uh, Put in a good word for me about what uh, I, I did uh, here while I was on earth. And, and what I, no, no, he didn't say that. He said, you shall, future tense, uh, active future tense, you shall be my witnesses. And we've all got a witness. Some uh, are different than others. Uh, we had a fellow uh, share with us uh, Brother Raj, uh, his testimony Wednesday. Before that, uh, the, the fellow shared his, uh, uh, Mike, the guitar player that was uh, the op optometrist. Uh, uh, and let's see, before that, uh, uh, the great Marshall McCall uh, shared his uh, testimony with us in uh, the uh, men's breakfast. So we all have a, a, a testimony to share it. And to tell people that what God has done for me and uh, how he's... Uh, given me that joy that uh, Al preached about and, and truth. Okay. Let's see. Uh, and verse 13 gives us a, a, a real reason for joy. Verse 13 in uh, Second Peter. But according to his promise, that's God, we are looking for a new heavens and new earth in which righteousness dwells. Wow. A dwelling and an a planet and a heaven where righteousness <laughs> righteousness uh, resides my word Th this planet in 2023 righteousness is not uh, dwelling much there, there's a little bit but uh, that that's uh, because uh, uh, It's, go, it's going to be different because he says a new heaven. I believe he's talking to the millennial reign of Christ. Uh, Christ. Therefore, uh, since you look for this thing, be diligent to be found by him, that's Jesus, in peace, spotless and blameless. And uh, so uh, that, that will be, if we're spotless and blameless, that means we're his child. We have his righteousness now. Okay, let's see if we've talked about that. Now let's go and see what uh, Paul has one more time to say about it. 
of the last days in 2 Timothy 1 7. Uh, okay, all right. 2 Timothy 3 I think it's right before Hebrews, yeah. <coughs> Chapter 3. Again, Paul is writing his protege, uh, Timothy, uh, and uh, encouraging him, uh, letting him know that being a pastor is tough. And uh, I don't think Timothy started churches, but he, he was assigned there to one of them. Chapter 3. But realize this, Timothy, in the last days, difficult times will come. There will be a, that means hard to deal with, the Greek says. For men and women will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful to them, uh, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, malicious gossips, without self-control, brutal, haters of good, and God, uh, treacherous, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, and holding to a form of godliness. In other words, they go to church, although they have denied its power, but they don't hear a word that's being said by the preacher or the, or the Bible teacher. Lost my place. Okay. For among them, uh, it says, uh, they have denied its power and avoid such men and women as these. And they uh, devour uh, weak uh, women. Uh, he's talking about the, to the men here as an example of how unloving, how uncompassionate that the, because the men reign the culture back then in the first century, uh, they, they would just uh, make a, let me see, uh, that the, the, they were women that were burdened in sin. They could have been widows. They, they were, uh, maybe their fathers had passed away, but they were burdened with sin, and they were open to any okay. doctrine around there. And the, Okay. And let, 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 let's finish this uh, passage up. Uh, in, in verse 13 it says, But evil men and impostors will proceed from bad to worse, deceiving and being deceived. How many times has Paul and Jesus said, Be, be on guard. Do not be deceived. Uh, be not dece deceived. And that's, that, that's happening today in 2023. Real quick, and again, my, my list is not uh, in, uh, complete, but let, let, let's look at this description of mankind uh, and where, where we go. something I said. Now, we've got, we gotta, we got to move along. Okay, let's see what our Lord Jesus had to say about the last days, okay? Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 3. To set this up, uh, the, uh, the great temple, they were up there at Jerusalem up for Passover. It, the great Herod's uh, temple there it was the national pride. The gold and the limestone just glowed in the, in the sunshine. And, uh, and Josephus uh, wrote that that temple, very temple was uh, torn down in 7 A.D., just like Jesus said, yep, it, not one, I think the King James Version says, not one stone will be unturned. It will collapse. The Romans are going to burn it. What? Yeah, oh, okay. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Glad y'all are keeping me squared away. So then the disciples, uh, he, he, they, 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 uh, the verses say, they asked, asked, asked him privately, 
Uh, Jesus, Jesus, come, come, come over here. Get, get, get out of the way here. Let, let me ask you something. When or what are the signs of your coming and the end of the age? And what does Jesus respond with? Yeah, yeah. And Jesus said, see that to see to it that no one misleads you or deceives you. And he says, okay, you want to know? Here it is. In verse 5, false Christs will arise. Okay, verse 5. Many, uh, many will come <coughs> in my name saying, I'm the Christ, and will mislead many. You know, there's no mention of false false Christs in the New, ter, ter, New Testament church there in the church age. There were false teachers, but no one claimed to be a Messiah. But uh, there, <coughs> what, what he was saying was false, uh, false teachers are Christ. I'm the way, you know. Now there may be others to come down the way. Verse 6, wars. <coughs> wars and rumors of wars. Well, uh, we, we got a few going, uh, and the rumors thereof, uh, there, there's one just north of Jerusalem uh, taking place right now. Nation against nation, that's race against race, okay? And the kingdom against kingdom, this is verse 7. Uh, that, those are governments, uh, the Chinas, uh, the Taiwans, the Ukraines, the uh, uh, Northern Irelands, uh, whatever. Uh, and famines, verse 7, and earthquakes, and fellow disciples, my, my followers, just the beginning of the bad birth pains. As a, he describes them as uh, birth pains in uh, verse 8. And they, they get more and more intense as, as they begin. Uh, verse 9, uh, Verse 7, uh, and the earthquake, the famines and earthquakes. There is famine taking place. We're so blessed here in the United States that we can get down to Walmart and get a loaf of bread, but there are other places that it's not that way. Okay, in verse 9. And they, that's the non-believers, the governments, the, go, the people in control, making the laws by which you live, uh, making sure that you're politically correct and not uh, using the God's word, which is hate speech, and uh, the second coming of Christ as a conspiracy theory, and uh, the, uh, the, the rapture as a, uh, you know, a, a, another conspiracy uh, theory. So uh, they will deliver you to what? Tribulation. Now notice here, he doesn't say the tribulation that we uh, premillennialists know as the seven year tribulation. He just says to tribulation caused by mankind's persecution and what he's believing in in his description in Second Peter and in Thessalonians and in uh, Timothy there. That's what I see. It doesn't say a designated uh, period. But let's continue uh, that's, that's open, open congestion. Uh, they will deliver you and will kill you. That's happening over on the other side of the planet uh, and m maybe other, other places. Uh, they will kill you and you will be hated by all natures. This is his followers on account of my name, Jesus. Oh, you're one of those Christians. Uh, and uh, in Iraq, uh, that that's, that's a death sentence. Uh, so he was warning them there. Verse 10. And at that time, many will fall away and deliver up one another and hate one another. There's your apostasy that Paul uh, talked about. Oh, that, 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 those, those people down at Village Bible, they, that they believe in uh, salvation by grace. Uh, it, there's no works involved. Now, surely you've got to do something. Uh, it can't be that easy, and they'll, they'll blow us off. Uh, uh, so let's see. Uh, and many false prophets 
We, we had a town full of them in Houston, and I'm sure there are others. Will arise and will what? Mislead many. And verse 12, another characteristic is lawlessness, okay? And because lawlessness, that's just disobeying the law. When a policeman pulls you over, you need to stop and uh, hand them your driver's license. Uh, uh, don't resist arrest and uh, uh, cause a, a problem. Uh, it's, it's, there's, no, no, and, and my, my law is different than your law. I, I fully believe I can, I have the right uh, to uh, uh, life, liberties, in the pursuit of happiness, and it's my body, and I, I can get rid of that uh, child. Uh, it, it's cramping my style. Uh, besides, my boyfriend said to do it or he'll leave me. Wow. My goodness. Lawlessness. Uh, and most people's love will grow cold, cold for their parents, for their children, for their uh, uh, unborn children, if you will. Uh, there just won't be... Uh, much love. The lawlessness will increase. The glove will grow cold. And oh, there's a country western song. We won't go there. Okay. But the one, the one follower that endures to the end, he shall be saved. In other words, enduring does not give you your salvation, but enduring means you've got that blessed hope of salvation that no matter what happens, uh, if I'm in prison or I die, and Paul uh, sp speak, spoke a bunch about that, I have got salvation or I'm saved. And th that's what I'm putting a thousand percent on. And verse 14, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in the whole world for a witness to all the nation, and then the end will come. The entire world will know uh, the gospel. They will have heard it. They, most of them, or many, will reject it. Yeah, that, 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 that's church stuff, but uh, I, I don't have time for that. that that's, that's for the, somebody else. Now, in verse 15, I think, now he, uh, he's, uh, Jesus is saying, here's some more of the signs, but I'm not giving you the, the, the time frame here. Therefore, when you see, uh, in verse 15, uh, the, uh, uh, by the way, uh, I'll write these up here real quick because the, uh, it talks about what Jesus talked about in Daniel. I, I'm just uh, going to, uh, that way you can say, hey, it was said in the Old Testament and then Jesus, who wrote it, by the way, and inspired Daniel to write it, uh, he, he quotes the exact same thing he told Daniel to write real quick. And you can just write these down. I'm going to write in big print. And then 11. 30, and 11. I hope that's big enough. I'll, I'll quote them out in case you watch it on YouTube and want to fast forward. Daniel 9.27. Daniel 11.31, Daniel 12.11. And just, Jesus is just recapping what he talks about, what's led, led up to the, what he calls the abomination of desolation. Okay, so this, some people say that this is the 70th week of the tribulation. In other words, halfway uh, through it. The tribulation, not the tribulation that Christians endure. Therefore, when you see the abomination of desolation... That's the uh, Antichrist, which was spoken through Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy pray place. That's, that's the temple. Couldn't be anywhere else. And let the, under, let the reader understand. Uh, they thought that it had already happened when Titus uh, sacrificed a pig there in, in the uh, temple. Uh, they thought it had happened. And so that's when you uh, know that it's time to flee Judea uh, to flee to the mountains and to the housetop and woe to those with a, with a with child and your flight may be night. For then, I'm, I'm in verse 21, for then there will be a great tribulation. Now that probably could be, might be, uh, I don't have any more text to, to support it, but in verse 21, <coughs> 
asthma. A great tribulation. He designates it that you will, in the, in the previous verses, he says, you will have tribulation in this world. You'll be hated because of my name, but a great tribulation. And he adds this, such as, in verse 21, such as not occurred since the beginning of the world until now or ever shall be. And unless those days had been cut short, no life, the entire human race would have perished. But for the sake of the elect days, those uh, sh shall be cut short. In other words, the existing Christians at that time. It could be, and again, I don't have the text uh, there, but since it's the tribulation that has been so severe since the beginning of time, no one other has been like that. It could be that that is the, a preview of the book of Revelation where the vials and the bowls, uh, the trumpets, are, are sounded and the great uh, pestilence that comes upon. The, you know, the, the moon is going to be darkened. The sun is going to be darkened. Uh, a, third of the billion, a third of the population of the earth. So it, it could be that that's that. But I, I just thought I'd throw that in there. But those are going to be the conditions. And it's, uh, those days are cut short. God is in control there. So in verse 23, hey, if, if anyone says, hey, Christ is here, Christ is there, don't believe him. For uh, what does he say? Again, false Christ, false prophets, signs and great, or great wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, the elect. This is not a pitch for election, okay? But the elects, in, in other words, uh, the, uh, the chosen ones, meaning those that God knew way before the creation of the planet, that they would come to a saving knowledge of him, be convicted by his spirit and by faith through grace, are saved, uh, and nothing can change that. Uh, so if possible, even the elect. Behold, <clears throat> verse 25, I told you in advance, okay? Uh, so it could be, it could be that the second coming of Christ would occur because Jesus goes on uh, to say uh, in verse 27, for uh, just like the lightning comes from the east and flashes even in the west, so the, sun and the coming of the Son of Man will be. Okay? Uh, he, he's saying, just use a little common sense. You're going to have the, the passages in my prophetic word that say this is what it's going to be like uh, when the last days are here uh, and the birth pangs start. So uh, he, he's told him. But immediately <clears throat> after the tri I'm, I'm, I'm in verse 29, okay. After the, tribula the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, moon not give its light, and the stars are going to fall, and the, all the powers of the heavens will be shaken. He's quoting Joel there. Uh, one of the, yeah. Joel uh, 2.31 if the print's too small. Joel 2.31 and Revelation 6.12. These are talking about the same event, I believe, uh, and then in, in Daniel uh, 7. That, that's when he identifies Christ, even back then. <clears throat> let's, let, let's wrap this up. Uh, and, all, uh, and, and then the sign of the Son of Man, I have no idea what the sign of the Son of Man will be. It could be a glowing cross, uh, but I don't know how much how much before the, the, the sign appears than the Lord himself comes. It could be some heavenly astral sign that the entire world, oh my word, a galaxy, uh, an asteroid is slowly approaching us and all the attention gets drawn to that asteroid and then, no wait, <laughs> no wait, it's not an asteroid. Uh, and the tribes of earth will mourn and they will see not an asteroid but the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And Revelation uh, 6, 
612. Six, yeah, 612 right there. I have to come up here and take a closer look. That, that, that's what he's describing. And he will send his, verse 31, he will send, that's, that's Jesus, send forth his angels with a great trumpet, and there's those trumpets uh, again, which uh, Paul refers to at the trumpet of the Lord, we will all be changed. Could be that that's, that's the, the rapture. Don't know, don't know. But that will be the gathering. And he will what? Uh, all the tribes will mourn. And then he will gather together in verse 31. His elect from the four winds, that's all over the planet, from one end of the sky to the other, all over the planet. And then it has the parable about the trilogy. <clears throat> and then he says, uh, but of that day and that hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but the Father alone. And now Jesus is God. How didn't he know? I would imagine that uh, most theologians agree that he became poor. He was rich and he became poor when he came to earth, meaning he limited some of his uh, infinite powers, uh, his omniscience, uh, omniscience because he, uh, God knew that this question was going to be asked by the disciples and he withheld that information and by his miraculous uh, power he, he, he could honestly say while here on the planet with the flesh on that's going to suffer and give my life for you for your sins I have put that information back up there in my, in my human form. But you never know. I just go on what uh, God's word says. Let's, com let's continue. <clears throat> and he says, for in those days, it, it'll be just like the days of Noah. Verse 38. Eating, drinking, having society as usual, giving in marriage uh, until the day uh, Noah entered the ark. And, uh, and uh, it was the same old stuff. And if you refer to Genesis 6, uh, God said, and the, the, this is probably the way that God is feeling right now. God said, verse uh, 3 of Genesis 6, My spirit must not forever be disgraced in man. He was not the, the shining example. He's still, he's still evil. And I'll give him 120 years. This is my version, by the way, I'm paraphrasing. To mend his ways. And in verse 5, God saw the extent of the human wickedness, only evil uh, reigned there. Kind of describing what Paul was saying. Verse 6, and God doesn't change. He was sorry he made man. Now that's not a sign of a, a, a mistake or a failure. God doesn't make mistakes. He doesn't fail. He doesn't react. He's God. <laughs> But it broke his heart because he loved his creation so much. And in, yeah. and in fact, uh, he's going to step into time and do the ultimate and take that penalty of death and eternal separation from us that whosoever believes in him. Uh, but Noah was the only righteous man among probably millions, because after uh, uh, Adam and Eve, uh, that there was many years uh, when they uh, multiplied and, and took care of the earth. Let's see, what else? Uh, okay. Real quickly, and uh, this, this subject comes up from time to time, and we'll go. <clears throat> the Battle of Armageddon, uh, and, you know, if, if no flesh uh, would be uh, saved, uh, th then th Jesus will come with his angels. Uh, but anyway, he, he comes uh, before er everything uh is destroyed uh, in uh, Armageddon. Revelation 20. Uh, it was, I, what does it say? Satan was bound and that for a thousand years and then uh, God dealt with him, threw him uh, in, into the lake of fire. Verse 10, he's gone forever. 
And then shortly thereafter, in verse 11 of Revelation, it says the white throne judgment takes place. So it, God is wrapping it up. But uh, there is also a passage, a passage, did I write it up there? And, and, some, and some of y'all are aware, the Ezekiel 38 war, war, war uh, Ezekiel 38, if you want to uh, read about this, in verse uh, 14 to 16, and then verse uh, 18. It, it talks about the mysterious Gog and Magog, uh, and that's just directly north, probably uh, a Soviet bloc power or, or whatever, that they come against Israel, and of course God defeats them, and all the nations know, wow, th this was not a military victory. This was a supernatural earthquake-inspired uh, uh, victory, and all the nations will know. Where that takes place... Uh, in the scheme of things, I don't think it's a description of the Battle of Armageddon because uh, that there's still people around and uh, that there's more that takes place. Any questions or comments uh, to uh, the, 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 the flyover about the last days and the end times? I, I've just given some ideas out there. Uh, again, uh, God will... Uh, Convict your hearts uh, will uh, give, give you wisdom. If you uh, ask, he does give his, his wisdom. And I, I, I don't know how it's going to pan out, but I know he's coming. He, that's a promise. That's a promise that we can dwell on. Any com Hallelujah. Yeah, yes, hallelujah and amen. Okay, let us... Uh, let, let, let us dismiss and then we'll let, let the folks uh, come, come through. I thank you, Lord, that uh, you have promised us you're coming back. You're going to straighten everything out and uh, sin will be no more. Death will be no more. And uh, eternity will begin with you. And I thank you for that gift. And uh, just let us be that church that uh, loves, serves, and uh, ministers to our community, and we make disciples. We bring Jesus to them or bring them to Jesus. Uh, wherever you lead, uh, we will be sensitive to it. And I thank you for the privilege that I get to uh, share uh, with this group. Uh, bless them, uh, encourage them uh, through your words, not mine, and uh, give us that, uh, that blessed hope and that assurance that you are returning. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.